Great. And hello, and I'll introduce myself. I'm afraid I missed introductions. I'm Karen McPherson. I'm the MLA for Calgary McKay Knows Health. Um, and uh, since time is money, let's just jump right into it. Um, so outcome number one of the business plan, this is on page 155. It refers to a strong and resilient financial foundation that supports government services for current and future generations. And in the context of security in particular, um, I'd like to talk about uh, in 2016 there was a ransomware attack against the University of Calgary where um, <laughs> the ransomers reportedly asked for payment in cryptocurrency. Does the government of Alberta to hold cryptocurrencies in re in reserve or hold them directly or indirectly right now? No. Um, and how often has the government of Alberta paid ransoms, either in cryptocurrency or in other currencies? Never. Um, in the same vein, um, blockchain in particular would certainly offer an opportunity for the government to <coughs> Um, ensure against some uh, ransomware attacks, is the government either now or in the future looking at implementing blockchain for um, their financial transactions? Mm -hmm. um, I, yeah, the IT security of the uh, province of Alberta is uh, under Service Alberta uh, and that minister. Um, probably best to direct your information questions that way. Um, I hope. But as a like a 360 analysis of what your risks are, I would I would <coughs> certainly suggest that being vulnerable to um, attack is one of those, and it would cert you'd certainly have some skin in that game. Um, and if it's not something that you're looking at right now, I'd really like to encourage you to take a look at that. I think it's really important. We are looking at it, but through Service Alberta, and I'll take your views under advisement. Thank you very much. Um, again, referring to outcome number one, um, the strong and resilient financial foundation, uh, I want to refer actually to the February 2018 Auditor General's report, and this is from page 121, and it's talking about the government working towards implementing an ERP um, de and developing standardized processes that departments must implement. Um, in the short term, encourage the Auditor General encourages the Treasury Board and Finance to share with all departments and ministers, offices, the good practices that have been identified so that they can be impl implemented. What is the status of the ERP system right now? Um, I'm advised it's in procurement at this time. So a third party vendor or will it be um, bespoke? Yes. A third party? It's not SAP, is it? <laughs> and where in the budget is it? Is that being funded? IT capital. IT capital. IT capital. Thank you. So, if it's in uh, procurement, I imagine you've done an analysis of where you are right now, where you want to be in the future. Um, do you have any more that you can share in terms of um, where the process is at? I, I think the Minister of Service, Alberta, would be able to do that. Okay, thank you very much. Um, and referring to standardized processes, can you uh, help me understand what kind of progress has been made in terms of developing and implementing standardized processes across departments and ministries? Uh, the processes uh, will be implemented with the ERP um, when, it, when that is concluded. Do you have um, a target date from Service Alberta when the implementation should be underway or completed? Uh, again, I would hope you would direct to uh, Service Alberta Minister. If for such a, a monumental change, I've been through some ERP implementations, uh, I again would really encourage you to get on board in that conversation. It will have a, a really profound effect on your work and being apprised of those dates I think will be extremely important. I understand we are, uh, our ministry is part of a transformation office. Our officials are on board and uh, the minister keeps uh, uh, cabinet aware of the activities. 
Thank you. Can, is there, outside of ERP, is there any progress that you can report on in terms of implementing better systems across ministries? Um, yeah, better systems. Yes, I can. Um, the, uh, the, uh, we have been moving to consolidate and be more efficient on the HR side. Uh, that work is ongoing in the Public Service Commission's area. We're also working to be consolidated and more efficient on the uh, communications and public engagement side, and uh, Mr. Hogan is leading that. Um, IT is another area that we're just talking about, and we're working to be uh, more consolidated and efficient there, and there's one other. Financial. And financial. Financial, financial yeah. is another uh, consolidation um, and working, frankly, with the Auditor General to improve our processes. Thank you very much. Well, in, um, I would assume then that the financial aspect of it would be the Treasury Management System and bids opened for that in April of 2016, if, um, if I'm reading the information correctly. Do we have uh, any information about implementation, where that's at in the process, what the costs are, and um, do you have measurable outcomes? And are you meeting the goals of the February 2016 AG report recommendations? So it will be done in conjunction okay. with the ERP. Yes, uh, we are rolling that into the ERP. It'll be done in conjunction with that and rolled out with that. So did the bidding go um, go public in at the same time as the ERP then? Yes. Okay, because from what I know, and I could be very ill-informed, um, that they were separate projects. Were they, were they not? No. I'm advised no. Oh, okay. All right. Thank you very much. Um, moving to page 153 in the business plan, um, the second last paragraph uh, talks about Alberta's economy um, is in a broad-based recovery following significant prolonged downturn caused by historic collapse in global oil prices. So how can Alberta be in a, a broad-based recovery? Um, the economy doesn't necessarily lack diversification, but certainly the revenue for the government does lack diversification. And, and while it's a broad-based recovery, are we able to understand the kind of impact that that has on the government's revenue? Um, greater stability. We do know that um, the economic recovery and, and a growing population will increase our revenues in the coming year, but more must be done in order to put the budget on the path to balance it by 2023. Our recovery and uh, our, as I said, our growing population are helping to increase revenues, but these factors alone are not enough. Uh, that's why we're focusing our attention on tax dollars and where they're needed most, and we're focusing on eliminating waste and controlling spending and finding efficiencies on our path to balance. Um, we uh, know that the economic recovery is touching many sectors, uh, manufacturing, exports, um, residential home sales, others that I've mentioned repeatedly. Uh, so that is what is uh, referred to as the economy is looking up and, and uh, broad-based. Um, oil prices, of course, are, are uh, increasing. Uh, consumer spending is uh, getting stronger. That's why we expect this recovery to continue into 2018 and to top the country uh, with GDP growth in 18 and 19. Thank you. So the, the path to, val to balance anticipates that non-renewable <laughs> resource revenues uh, will rise from 3.8 billion out of a total of 47.9 billion. And this is from the fiscal plan, page 86. Sorry, I jumped around a little bit. Um, this year, which represents 7.93%, to 10.4 billion out of a total of 66.3 billion, or 15.6%, in 2023 24. Tax revenue uh, is projected to hold steady at 48% of the total, while other revenues fall from 44 to 37 
percent of um, all revenue. How does increasing non-renewable resource revenue portion of provincial income make government revenues less dependent on oil? Uh, well, I think I, I showed a historical uh, chart um, that talked about at one point in time, 37% of uh, government revenues came from non-renewables. We're down in the 7% amount um, increasing to 16 percent versus the average over 20 years which has been 22 percent so I you know I, I'm trying to get across that uh, we're not as reliant on uh, non-renewables as previous governments have been and we're focused on diversification at this time uh, and, and partial upgrading uh, uh, so that we get better value for the, uh, the non-renewables that are shipped out of this province. Thank you. I'm going to go back to the business plan. This is referring to page uh, 154 in the second paragraph. And the targeted tax credits um, and business development programs, including the petrochemical diversification program, the capital investment tax credit, the Alberta investor tax credit, the scientific research and experimental Shred. development tax credit. Shred. What other programs um, are going to be introduced or enhanced this year that will be funded by the budget? Uh, you've looked at, uh, sorry, and, and what other ones? Yep. Um, there is no plan to introduce others at this time. Uh, we've laid out our plan in Budget 2018, uh, as you have read it, as you see it, and this is what we uh, will be sticking to going forward. Of course, you know, we will adjust based on uh, the success or challenges we find in the available programs we've identified. Uh, and budget 2019 may look very similar or, or, or somewhat different. <coughs> Thank you. Um, on page 154, it, this is near the end of the second yeah. paragraph, talking about minimum wage. Um, what increase in personal income tax revenue do you estimate will come from the final, final minimum wage increase this year? Because... We, because the uh, personal exemption for income uh, in this pro their taxable income is 18600 okay. or something like that. So that's okay. too low to be affected by the okay. increase in minimum wage. All right. Uh, the minimum, sorry, the minimum wages a person would uh, make is uh, lower than the personal exemption. And so they wouldn't be taxed. <laughs> they wouldn't be reflected. Sorry. Um, just in, in keeping with minimum wage, has the ministry or any other department estimated the change in the total number of workers who work for minimum wage before and after the minimum wage changes? You know, I, I'm pretty sure that the labor minister has, um, and that that information could be easily garnered from that person. That, um... I wonder also if there's any kind of analysis on comparing the minimum wage increase, so it'll be $15 this year in October, um, comparing that to a minimum income scenario and understanding what the best outcomes are both for the people who would be affected by that as well as what the impact on both the revenue and the output from the government would be. Um, you know, I know many, uh, many civic... Uh, Leaders, I'm more, well, I guess I put it a different way, more um, people in the nonprofit community have been talking about this and urging uh, all governments across Canada to do more. Uh, we, uh, uh, of course, have uh, a community and social services ministry that probably hears these requests on a regular <laughs> basis. Um, <coughs> I'm, I've not initiated any work myself to that end. Uh, there are uh, pilots going on across Canada, both in Ontario and uh, I think in, in New Brunswick. Um, and I think it would probably be wise for us to see what the outcome of those pilots are 
before we uh, initiate any of our own activities, though I can tell you that we have increased uh, monies to community and social services for the income support programs because of the spike in individuals and families that came forward through the recession and subsequent to the recovery, uh, early part of the recovery, needing income support. Uh, and we are there with uh, supporting Albertans. I would think that understanding um, what those two different approaches look like would really be important in terms of your outcome, number one, and being able to advise the government overall as to what the most effective policy is going to be. Um, so I would, I would really hope that at some level the government is taking a look at that to understand comparing the two of them and contrasting what, what outcomes there might be. Mm. It's um, uh, one of the wishes I have. If I had a magic wand, <laughs> I would be starting to work on that. But uh, I have uh, much work to do repairing the problems left by the previous government. Um, <clears throat> on page 154, there's mention of uh, the adoption of gender-based analysis plus or GBA plus. Um, and being committed to advancing gender equality. In what specific ways does GBA plus budgeting show up in your ministry's measurable outcomes? Mm -hmm. Just give me a sec. Of course, the uh, um, status of women uh, minist ministry and minister have uh, pushed this, uh, we have, I think there's a subcommittee yep. working with uh, GBA plus uh, budgeting analysis. Uh, we do have some information which I can share with you, but we're just locating it. committed to advancing equality by allocating resources based on needs of Alberta's diverse populations. Uh, we've got to ensure that all government initiatives, this is more by way of background, programs and policies and services are delivered effectively to every Albertan, every Albertan. Our province and economy will not <laughs> reach their full potential without everyone being empowered to participate fully uh, in life in Alberta. Several initiatives are underway to promote uh, economic security for women, indigenous people, those with low incomes and persons with disabilities. Uh, you might know that the Alberta Status Women Grant Program provides... Uh, if I could just interrupt you, Minister, I'm looking for specifically for Treasury Board and Finance, what kind of um, measurable outcomes are being measured against GBA plus? Uh-huh. We are... Uh, uh, we'll be ensuring that the monies that get identified for the, the, the suite of programs to assist Albertans uh, is properly uh, dispensed and accountable. Uh, for instance, there is money going to charitable non-profit -char organizations to enhance women's security and democratic participation. We'll make sure that that occurs. Uh, we're going to ensure that the uh, Learning and Child Care Centre program, which assists Albertans with uh, early learning, uh, is properly expended and accounted for. We're making sure that the Alberta Child Benefit monies uh, directly come out of TBF and Mr. go to lower-income families. Is there a specific metric <clears throat> that can be identified in your budget that, that says this is as a result of GBA plus budgeting? Assistance for, uh, gender diversity. Okay. The uh, metrics we'll be looking for is the successful implementation of the programs that are budgeted for. Okay, thank you. Um, I, and I would encourage you to take a look at, you know, if there is a metric that you want to develop that is a lot more clear for people about the, we can quantify GBA plus has had this effect on our budget. I think that would be really useful. 
Um, on page 155, Key Strategy 1.5 talks about making the best possible use of public dollars and find um, operational expenses, uh, finding savings, sorry. With, with debt servicing costs climbing up to be the fourth... Thank you, 